I'm Akshaya. And I'm Vanshika. Welcome back to another episode of The Friday Show. We hope you had a great week and are ready for some fun stories. Our top story this week is all about masks. Yep, those things we have had to wear on our faces for the last two years. How would you feel about not having to wear them to school anymore? Just this week, governors of several states lifted their orders order to require masks in schools. Connecticut, New Jersey, and Oregon will all stop making students wear masks. While California is not on the list, Governor Gavin Newsom might sign a similar order soon. Connecticut, New Jersey, and Oregon will all stop making students mask up in coming weeks. This combined with the number of students who have been vaccinated makes California a state that might drop mask ma mandates. The number of COVID cases has dropped a lot since after the Om Omicron surge. Some people have differing levels of comfort and vulner and vulnerable family members at home. Some people might still choose to wear masks, which will be completely understandable. Mask wearing has been hard for some with breathing problems, learning difficulties, and who are hard of hearing. But for students who are vaccinated and struggle to wear a mask all day, this is welcome news. While the end might be in, might be in sight, it is of course dependent on COVID and if it is done with deadly vari variants. Masks have been vital to stop the spread of COVID-19, but re returning to quote normal school is something everyone has been dreaming about. We have lived for a long time with the seasonal flu and that is about the same risk to a healthy vaccinated person as coronavirus is today. Even if another version like Omicron comes along, people who have vaccinations are at very low risk. It will be interesting to see what happens if and when California lifts its mask requirement. And now, some more interesting stories for you. United States Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer is retiring. He will step down at the end of the current term. At age 83, Breyer is the oldest member of the court. He was nominated by President Bill Clinton in 1994. In order to be balanced with other branches of our government, the Supreme Court Justice serve a lifetime term and chose to leave when it suits them. Justice Breyer has chosen to retire while a Democratic president is in office to replace him. His retirement gives the President Biden a chance to nominate a black woman to the Supreme Court. This would be the first black woman to serve on the nation's highest court and would help the Supremes be a better representation of our country. Some critics argue that this is unfair and the job should go to the best candidate. What President Biden, sa uh, Biden has said he is going to honor his campaign promise. Justice Breyer says he feels good but knows the risk of not retiring. His fellow liberal Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg famously did not retire when given the chance. She passed away when Donald Trump was in office and he replaced her with a judge who did not share her beliefs. Justice Breyer will be remembered for being a caring and thoughtful member of the Supreme Court. Many of his colleagues look uh, only the, the law, but Justice Breyer tried to look beyond the words on the page to see how decisions would affect the people. It will be interesting to see how the nomination of the a new justice goes. It can be tough with the Congress that is so divided. The mummified remains of Amenhotep the first who ruled Egypt from around 1525 to 1504 BC were unearthed over a century ago but in 1881 but the pharaoh's sarcophagus his carved and patent coffin was left untouched for fear of damaging his body now researchers have used three-dimensional computerized tomography known as a CT scan to peek through the layers and obtain valuable information about the ancient king who lived over 3,500 years ago. By digitally unwrapping the mummy and peeling off its virtual layers, the face mask, the bandages, and the mummy et itself, experts could study this well-preserved pharaoh in detail never seen before. The team believes that Amenhotep was the first was about five feet five inches tall. He had a narrow nose and chin and curly hair. His surprisingly well-preserved teeth suggest the pharaoh may have had good dental practices. 
The scans revealed that unlike with other pharaohs, the ancient king's brain had not been removed during the mummification process. The bone, a bone analysis indicated the pharaoh was about 35 years old when he died. Since the body mummification process Since the body was free of any injuries before his death, experts suspect the pharaoh may have died from an illness. Scientists are very pleased with the data that they were able to gather and plan to CT scan in other, mu other mummified kings in the future. A new sleeping bag could prevent vision problems on long space missions. The invention aims to relieve pressure that builds up behind the eyes during long periods of low gravity like astronauts experience. The sleeping bag's design aims to avoid something known as SANS. That stands for Spaceflight Associated Neuroocular Synd Syndrome. On Earth, gravity pulls fluids in, in the body down into the legs. But without the pull of Earth's gravity, too much fluid stays in the up head and upper body. The high-tech sleep sack looks like a giant sugar cone and covers only the lower half of the body. The idea for it to came the idea for it came from a technique scientists used to study blood pressure. This extra fluid presses on the back of the eye and changes its shape so you get more farsighted. The pressure also causes a part of the eye's optic nerve to swell. The extent of the effects depends on how long people spend in microgravity. So a long duration of space flight, like 15 months, could be a problem. That period is how long it will take to get to Mars. The sleeping bag's cone shape assures the fluid to be moved back to the ast astronaut's leg without sucking the bag into the leg. The test subjects found that it was a weird sensation at first, but got used to it after a short while. An invasive species is a plant or animal that is causing problems in an area where it doesn't belong. Right in front of you in Forest Park Elementary School, you, you will find English ivy growing up trees. It did not naturally grow there, but it has spread after people planted it. Another local example of invasive species are the parrots. There are two flocks of parrots in the Bay Area, one in San Jose and one in San Francisco's Telegraph Hill. There are once pets that were set free or escaped. Last week, another local animal made the headlines, the wild pigs. In the East Bay Hills of Orunda, Moraga, and Lafayette, wild pigs are causing havoc. They are tearing up soccer fields, people's backyards, and contaminating the drinking water. Residents had, had had enough of these menaces and are asking the state to make it legal for them to be hunted. Animal rights activists are stepping in to stop them. It is making for the quite the battle. The wild pigs were brought to North America by farmers and settlers, but like many invasive species, they are excellent at adapting to the new environment. They have spread out and they have spread out, out of control and something needs to be done. Hopefully they can find a solution. Do you consider yourself an artist? Well then, I have a few stories to share. The first is about a second grade boy in Idaho. Over, a winter, over the winter break, he wrote a book. He really wanted other people to read it because he spent a whole four days on it. So when his grandma took him to the local library, he placed the journal with an illustrated story about how he, how he gets transported back in time after the star on top of his Christmas tree exploded. Instead of being upset, the librarians entered it in their systems and started checking it out. It was such a hit that 56 people were on the waiting list for the sole copy. Another cool story is about heart statues in San Francisco. Inspired by the song, I Love My Heart at San Francisco, there are 131 heart statues all over the city and have been decorated by all sorts of famous artists. They're raising money for the San Francisco General Hospi Hospital Foundation. This year, one of the artists selected to have their work on a heart is only a third grader. Radhan Desai from Mountain View's design was one of the 20 chosen. If you want a cool place to show off your art, consider entering this year's Google Doodle contest. Entries are accepted until March 4th, and if you win, your drawing will be featured on Google search for the whole world to see. Hey everyone, I'm Nishan with this board support. Let's start with football. The 49ers had a disappointing loss to the LA Rams. Their score was 20 to 17. With that loss, the 49ers are out of the playoffs and has left and have lost their chance to make it to the Super Bowl. The two teams for Super Bowl 56 are the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. The Super Bowl will start on Sunday at 3:30 p.m. Now let's talk about tennis. 
The Australian Open just finished and I would like to recognize Rafael Nadal from Spain and Ashley Barty from Australia. Ashley Barty won, it for, won the Australian Open from the women's side and Rafael Nadal won it from the men's side. Before Rafael Nadal won the Australian Open, he, Novak Djokovic, and Roger Federer were tied for the most number of Grand Slams Grand, Grand Slam title ones. Grand Slam titles won. But now with that win, he is now on top. Now let's talk about basketball. The Dubs beat the OKC Thunder 110 to 98 on Monday, but sadly lost to the Utah Jazz 111 to 85 on Wednesday. They will have played the New York Knicks on Thursday and will play the Lakers on Saturday. The Sharks have been off for the hockey all-star break, so no games to report. They'll play the Edmonton Oilers on Monday, and finally the Olympics have started in Pyeongchang, China. So far, Germany is winning the medal count and USA is in fourth. That's all for sports. Awesome.